was beginning to feel like the only person in the world who thought it sucked. Oh. You are the only person in the world who thought it sucked. <laughs> but you're right, it didn't make sense. It made dollars. Hello everyone, and yes, it's about time doing a movie review, and I'm doing a movie review that is late, but we're going to talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. So, there's a lot of things to talk about this one. This one is actually just going to be a freaking spoiler review, but it's been so out for so long, doesn't really matter if I actually don't spoil it for people. <clears throat> Even so, my goodness, there's just a lot of things to say. First things first, I mean, there's some pros and there's some little cons where I'm like, oh, con number one, why the hell April O'Neil had to dress up differently? I mean, as you can see in the end of the freaking movie, she is a reporter. So why the frick isn't she like trying to be a reporter and saying, oh, 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 Dr. Stockman, oh, you're doing so many cool things. I would just like to get a nice little information from you, you know, just a little thing, a side note, because, well, the person that she's working with is basically pressuring her to get some info on the guy because he needs to be noted. And as you can see, he wants to be noticed. Thus, the reason to give her that costume or have that crazy outfit she was wearing was a bit stupid. No offense, but that was a bit stupid. <clears throat> With that said, as you guys can see, oh, oh, man, they did an overhaul on the freaking damn shredder. They did an overhaul. He's not white anymore. Those who just look at just look at the first movie, look at the second movie. Chances are people are like, what the f just like free and Iron Man and Iron Man 2. You had Terrence Howard there, and then you had Don Cheeto, and you're like, "What? Wait, wait, what the? F <laughs> what the f is this?" <laughs> so yeah, they changed freaking Shredder, and he did it for the better. That was awesome. That was really awesome. So let's see. Oh yes, um, Gary Anthony Williams. For people who don't know who that is, he's a funny guy. Holy freak, he lost weight. He plays as Bebop, by the way. Holy frick, he lost weight. And Seamus, what's up, man? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so let's see. Um, so going down the list, Casey Jones actually changed. Yeah, they changed his character, but I won't say they changed it for the worse. It's cool that Casey Jones is trying to become a cop, a detective. That was okay. I was fine with that. Yeah, it was really nothing messed up about his character. His character seemed the same. Nothing really different. Only thing I have to say that's a little bit nitpicky about me, but of course he's trying to become a detective. Of course he won't have long locks of hair. But that's what Casey Jones' character is. He has a bit of hair on him. Just saying. Uh, let's see. Oh, when Bebop and Rocksteady transformed... Bebop's freaking shoe ripped open, but as soon as he finished transformation, his shoe is back together. That's some messed up editing there. <laughs> that was some messed up editing. Other than that, that was some pretty good stuff. I mean, yeah, that was, it's a freaking good freaking damn movie. Yes, there were some hints of Secret of the Ooze in there. There's like lots of hints. Like, for instance, Mutagen is now revealed, but they don't know it as mutagen number two remember where razor actually was holding on to two turtles and spinning them around in the original second movie same deal happened in this one but this time it's crane and it was michelangelo and i think it was Raphael. no it wasn't Raphael. it was donatello i think it was the same thing previously back in the day too so <laughs> it's kind of nice that they did have vanilla ice not go ninja, go ninja, go, which that would have been so awesome if they did that. They did that, but they didn't do it in the movie, which that would have been awesome. Oh, the technology that they used for April, like the freaking plug in, that was awesome because they had Donnie's old 1980s face on there, and that was like, that was cute. Oh my gosh, let me talk about the freaking damn Falcon. The Falcon. That was funny as frick. I would admit that was funny as freak. And I was kind of a little bit like, what the, what's the deal with you guys picking on this poor guy right here? You know who he is. 
But now getting context, I'm like, oh, yeah, spitball, <laughs> spitball. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, he got so full of himself. It's not even funny. He got so full of himself. But not only that, but they actually made him useful. That was nice. They made him actually useful. Let's see. Oh, the Krang. Wow. I think the person who voiced the Krang is usual guy that you'll see around the place. I think he was in Buzz Lightyear as one of the bad guys and everything else. I Me mean, personally, I'm like, you know who would have been good to voice Krang? The voice of Godar, damn it. Get Godar's voice character and voice him. Hell yeah. That sound that would have been awesome as frick. That would have took me back. That would have been awesome. I hope he's not dead because if he's dead, then it's like, oh, fuck. That's, that's why I didn't get him. Let's see. The turtles look. I got used to it. Yeah, it wasn't like a big bombshell. Oh, man. Intro. The first part we saw of the turtles, they were acting like a family. Definitely. Oh, man. I connected to them more than I did in the previous movie. And I think we're going to come to the point of where, of course, you know, you know what happened the whole entire movie. The fact that Shredder was a stupid idiot and stuff like that. And let me talk about how Shredder's downfall happened. So he got frozen like um, what Slappy did in Goosebumps. <laughs> and also what happened to Han Solo in the freaking Star Wars movies. So if you look in the freaking freezer next to him to his left is actually a Triceraton. Winkity wink wink. <laughs> uh, let's see what else yeah it was kind of interesting I mean this is the first time ever we got Bebop and Rocksteady that was nice first time we got Krang that was nice that would have been nice for the third movie to do that instead of time travel but whatever but still man that was a good movie and let's talk about it let's talk about the freaking thing that happened the fact that they redconned the first movie they read it con the first movie. They did. They read con the first movie. They do mention it. They do have a little add ins just in case for those who are actually faithful to the first movie. But this is their first movie. This is their real actual movie. I mean, if it wasn't their first movie, their true official first movie, then why the frick did they have to show Leo, the leader, Donnie, the brain, Raphael, the muscle? Mikey, pizza lover. That was a good one. That was a good one. That was funny. Mikey had some good, funny moments, too. Yeah. Good, funny moments. Dummy down shredder. It was okay. Let me tell you for the foot soldiers, their action figures. If they would have got the goggles on them, they just had to scope the goggles. They didn't even have to put in the freaking stupid eyes on them. They could have just had them with goggles. I would have bought one. I wish shredder had the goggles, too. But hey, shredder, shredder. Um, anything else? I enjoyed the movie so much, actually. I would like to buy this movie, and as for the first movie, I'll buy it for the sake of just the fact that they had, like, two hints of the previous movie. But technically, I would say you don't even need their, in quotations, first movie. This is their first movie. This is the movie that they care about. And Michael Bay actually gave a nod and a wink with the whole Transformers. And, of course, the reason why it's called Out of the Shadows, but it's a holy freak. So the police force now know that the turtles exist. Wow. That's the first time ever that happened. The first time ever. So I would love to see how this goes. Hopefully they'll make a third movie because they really do need to make a third movie now. A.K.A. second movie now. They really got to do it because this was just an awesome movie. Awesome. It beats the first one out of the water. And that's what technically sequels supposed to do. Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2 did it. Spider-Man 3. We don't talk about Spider-Man 3. But all the other sequels. Like if you're making a good movie. Make sure that the sequel beats the rest of them. And final notes. This is their first movie. They made sure that they made this their first movie. With little minor hints. As for Splinter not saying anything or having stuff in the lines, I think I'm going to get used to Splinter. But me personally, I would have loved in the first movie in a backstory that would have said, oh, that rat. Oh, I got that rat from a friend of mine from Japan. Yeah, you know, the little hint of Master Roshi. 
yeah. Oh, no, yeah, Master Roshi. Yeah, he killed. No, that was Master Roshi. I forgot his name. But Splinter's actual master pet owner. I would have loved it if he just got it from a friend or to even reenact it where Shredder actually hurt the guy, killed him, took his rat, and now he's going to experiment on his rat. That would have been cool. But anyways, that's about it. Cry is cry. Yay. I'm glad you guys heard that. But anyways, thank you for watching. And I would say if you haven't watched this movie and haven't spoiled it for you, definitely go see it. And oh yeah, no ends credits. This would have been a good one to have ends credits for. It's kind of sad that they don't have actually a good song to go with it because, yeah, they just revamped the old one in the end which is kind of sad it's like this one needs a signature music it needs a signature song they really need to do that but anyways thank you for watching